how to annotate consistently for deep learning pathology models. Let me tell you the truth. You can't. Okay, you can, but it's gonna require a lot of self-discipline. So if you have that, you're on your way to developing a robust deep learning model and I'm gonna take you through the process. But before we go there, let's address a couple of challenges. Why did I tell you in the first place that you can't? Because for a supervised deep learning model development, you need very consistent ground truth. And me and you as a human being are not always that consistent. What do I mean by that? We tend to drift in our evaluation, in our perception. And this is something that is common in the diagnostic pathology world. It's called diagnostic drift, where you expand the definition of your diagnosis as you gain more experience. And the same is happening with annotations. We start annotating, we have an idea of what we're gonna be annotating, but then we see different variations of this thing and the definition expands. And what we need to make sure of is that as our definition expands, we go back to what we did at the beginning and make it consistent again. Now multiply that by the amount of people that's gonna be taking part in your project and annotating, and you start grasping the complexity. Okay, so how do you keep yourself in check to have consistent ground truth? There's a couple of points. And point number one is decide what you're gonna be annotating. And by deciding, I mean write down and make screenshots of it. So we're here in Aphoria Create, a cloud-based platform for developing supervised deep learning model. And by the way, here a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Aphoria. Thank you for giving me access to the platform so that I can show the annotation concepts. So what are we gonna do? This is a mouse lung cancer model. This is lung tissue and we have those blobs. These are the tumors and we wanna annotate them so we can take screenshots. PowerPoint works fantastic for that, but you can use whatever you want. And we are gonna take screenshots of the appearances of these tumors that we're gonna be annotating. So here it looks a little different, but we're gonna start with the main appearance. This is gonna be our appearance. And we're gonna describe in our spreadsheet or in our PowerPoint presentation or our ground truth document, we need to make a ground truth document, how those cells look like. And that's what we're gonna start with. Step number two, start annotating. We're gonna start annotating what we just took screenshots of. And we're gonna start with the main appearance of the tumor cells. But as we start annotating, we're gonna realize, oh, some of the cells look differently. The cells that we just took a screenshot of here look slightly different than the appearance here and slightly different than the appearance here. So what you're gonna do now is take more screenshots and add more descriptions. And we're gonna add all this to our initial ground truth document. In that way, we cover the spectrum of what we will be annotating of our ground truth. And now we're gonna do a bunch of annotations according to what we put in our document. Once we have enough annotations, we can move to step number three, which is training your first model. What you're gonna do here, you're gonna use the annotations that you created to train the model, look at the results, and based on the results, you're gonna adjust your annotations. And you are gonna annotate where this model underperforms, where it doesn't detect what you want it to detect. And what we're gonna judge here, remember we were thinking about our ground truth consistency. We are developing the model at the same time, but with ground truth consistency in mind. So what we are evaluating here is, does this model underperform on tissue that was not covered in our ground truth document? If that's the case, what do we do? We take a screenshot, we put it in the PowerPoint, we annotate the places that were not annotated yet. But we have our ground truth document kept up to date. Then we train again. We need to repeat this exercise a couple of times until we are satisfied with the results that we're getting from the model. By this time, we should have covered every aspect of what our tumor looks like. Different types of cells, different types of structures, vacuolation, they all look similar to us. We know that this is tumor, this is what we're looking for, but the model needs to be trained 
on every single aspect and it has to be shown the pixel composition with our annotations. Hence, we need to keep our ground truth document updated with each new appearance. And voila, we have our ground truth playbook ready for future projects. I know at this point you might be thinking, but Alex, can we just make this document at the beginning once and done, checked off, and then just annotate? Why do we have to have so many iterations? I get you. I wanted to work that way as well and prepare everything in advance. But for every image analysis project I worked on, I ended up defining ground truth the way I just described to you. I was just not able to describe all the different ways my ground truth is going to look like out of my head and without seeing the performance of the model. So let me recap everything for you. First, write down and make screenshots of what you want to annotate. Second, start annotating. Third, go back to your PowerPoint and add the screenshots of what you have annotated but did not have in there originally. Four, train your first model with the annotations you have provided. Five, check the performance of the model. Six, annotate the places where the model does not perform well. Seven, add missing appearances to the PowerPoint, aka ground truth document. Eight, train the model again. Nine, repeat until you're satisfied with the performance and you have covered all the appearances of your ground truth. I hope it helps and that you have enough self-discipline to do it or task somebody who has in your team to do it. And thanks so much to Aphoria for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about annotations, there is a full webinar that we did together with Aphoria some time ago that covers all the aspects how to annotate for supervised deep learning models. So I'm linking to this in the description below. And I talk to you in the next episode.